skin, so brother. But yeah, Wonka's hand is very convincing CGI, not fake whatsoever. Well, considering that this is just the opening sequence, it doesn't really matter if it looks fake or not. But who are driving the delivery vans? I mean, the people who stick up the posters aren't Oompa Loompas, so I doubt the delivery drivers are either. But yet they say no human has worked for Wonka in years, so what gives? Okay, I'll give you the poster people not being Oompa Loompas, but how do you know these delivery drivers are regular humans, judging by the camera angles presented in this film? Plus, if you've seen Josh Gorgeous' video on this movie, you'd know that these windows were designed specifically so that we wouldn't see who's driving them. Tinted windows, so no one can see that the people driving are actually Oompa Loompas. Little details like that make the story a little more airtight. By the way, I gotta ask, is a toothpaste factory a real thing? Yes. Dad found it. Just the piece I needed. What piece was it? A head for Willy Wonka. All he's given is another cap and he gets so excited. Would you stop being so happy as a f***ing cap? Well, considering how they have little to nothing to live off of, they might as well enjoy the little things. And even if it weren't the case, what's wrong with a little hobby to pass the time? And yeah, this is 20 years ago, yet Grandpa Joe still looks like he's 104. That's the joke. And holy shit, Wonka hasn't aged in 15 years either. What kind of vitamins are these people taking? I need some. The same vitamins the real giant does been apparently taken recently. So Wonka helps Aladdin here build a temple of chocolate, but how did he expect it to not melt? You're in a hot-ass country, and what's even the point in this story? It kills time and adds nothing except makes Wonka look like an idiot for going along with a stupid plan. This side story may seem like a pointless detour in both this version and the original book, but if you really think about it, then you know it actually has two purposes. One, to establish how big of an impact Wonka's candy has made to the point of this Indian prince commissioning something as big as a huge palace made entirely out of chocolate. And two, it foreshadows the idea that Willy Wonka may be a bit crazy at times, but he pretty much knows what he's talking about when it comes to the safety of others, regardless of whether the others listen to him. It is perfect. Yeah, but it won't last long. You better start eating right now. He's out of line, but he's right. Oh, and this Charlie sucks. I mean it. We see it more as the film progresses, but he has the emotion of a teaspoon. How is it that a kid with no previous or future acting experience was better than this asshole? Well, in terms of his performance, you have to take into account that he's gotten used to all the bad luck he and his family have gone through. Hence why Freddy Highmore performs this so subtly. Plus, would you rather watch him have a mental breakdown and not stop saying, I am a surgeon for two minutes straight? Man, are we just gonna ignore the fact that Wonka pretty much kidnapped the Oompa Loompas as his slaves? He doesn't even pay him in real cash! Yes, we're gonna ignore that because Wonka imported the Oompa Loompas to his factory with their explicit consent. It's not like he dragged them there against their will. Wait, he doesn't even have a roof? He just sleeps in the rain and piss? Jesus Christ, I thought I was broke. Well, it's not currently raining on this particular night, so what's your point? For all we know, he could just move the bed over on nights when it is raining. So I look and... I find the golden ticket. And then I found the Jews and I gassed them on. That's racist. Now that I think about it, how the hell are they so broke they can't afford bread, but they can afford a TV and a TV license? Except there's no TV license involved, as you can clearly see the antennas at the top. From now on you can stop shelling peanuts and start shelling the wrappers off these chocolate bars instead. I have no personality, I am just a suit. <laughs> Throughout the scene alone, you can tell that he's someone who doesn't want to see his daughter unhappy and feels the best way to make her happy is to give her everything she wants. And these guys see he has no personality. My little Veruca got more and more upset each day. Where's my golden ticket? I want my golden ticket! And then I want my acting lessons. In that she's acting like a spoiled brat who wants to act cute and lovable for as long as she can until things still get her way. Basically a live action version of Dollar Dimple. But why is the front door sideways? How the f is the house not collapsing right now? Because this family's so poor that they can't get the house to look proper. Maybe you want to open your birthday present. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so charming. Oh, I'm such a charming little boy. Oh no. I'm so disappointed. Wah. Ladies and gentlemen, this stupid writing joke that takes up about a third of this video. I'm not gonna explain why this stupid as I explained it in sin number 8, so I'll just bet this in count and move on. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, shall we get the ticket, Grandpa Joe? I really want this so much. I'm so happy. You can see by my emotions. Oh, we, I get to go to the chocolate factory. Why is the f***ing door sideways?! <laughs> Alright, that, that whole delivery made me laugh. <laughs> 
Oh, I'm so sad. I'm so sad. Oh, look. Oh, ten dollars. Even though we're all British and this should be set in England, but no one knows where the f*** we are. Dude, this is a fictional town built around a large factory, and it's the currency that's throwing you off. Oh, wow. I found the golden ticket. Oh, yes. There it is. Happy days. Yay, I found it. Hooray. Yippee. I think Josh Scorcher describes it perfectly. And the look of disbelief on Charlie's face. No excitement. No smiles. Just... His mind can't comprehend what he's seeing right there. And remember how big a deal it was for Grandpa Joe to finally walk again after all these years in the original? No one around him even cares! This is the first time he's walked in years and nobody gives a shit! Because clearly these are the faces of people who don't give a shit that one of the elderly can suddenly walk again. Who is going with Charlie to the factory? I will. Um, don't I get to say in this, Grandpa Joe? I'm sure Charlie would have said something if he objected to Grandpa Joe going with him. A woman offered me $500 for the ticket. We need the money more than we need the chocolate. This kid just wants money! This Charlie is a little shithead! It's almost as if a family of seven can't live on chocolate alone or something. So Grandpa, exactly how much did you scam the government with your fake disability? In fact, wait a minute. They are four elderly disabled people. How exactly are they broke? They should be loaded. Well, how else do they pay for the mortgage and the electricity for the television and lights? You know, I find it really hard to believe that nobody else in this big ass crowd are trying to get through the security gates. I mean, there's no security. Do you see the row of blue uniforms that are separating the crowd from the ticket winners? That are specifically there to keep anyone else from sneaking in? But I used to work here in the factory. And then you fired me for no reason. And after I worked for you for 25 years. First of all, that first flashback was from 20 years ago, not 25. And second, considering how bad the secret recipe thievery is, I wouldn't really blame Wonka for not trusting anyone in his workforce. Don't you want to know our names? Can't imagine how it would matter. Wait, he doesn't want to know their names? But he's planning on leaving the fucking factory to them! Yet another case where Josh explained it better than I ever could. Can't imagine how it would matter. A lot of people misinterpret this line. It's a double negative. He's messing with them. And that's kind of a theme throughout the whole factory stay. He's testing them with weirdness to see who's worthy. Mr. Wonka, I'm Violet Beauregard. Oh. I don't care. Why is Wonka a dick in this? People say it follows the source material closer than the original. Wonka wasn't a dick. He got frustrated and he hated naughty children. That's why Gene Wilder got frustrated and hated naughty children in the original. But in this, he's a dick to the kids for no reason. Some of them just say hi and he's like, eh, screw you, I don't like you little shits. Depp talks to them all like shit from the very beginning, which goes completely against the character and the source material. The fact that Raoul Dahl's own family let this slide is mind-blowing to me. I agree on some level. I hear people say that this is some kind of paste to scream pitch perfect adaptation of the original novel when, while it's far closer than the original movie, it takes on liberties towards the narrative, especially regarding Wonka's character. I'd easily say that Gene Wilder's interpretation is far closer to Walt Dahl's description than Johnny Depp was, so I'll take a sin off. With that said though, this interpretation of Wonka does make sense, and it does make sense why Wonka is so biased against the children in this version. Considering his troubled childhood and his own workers betraying him, and considering how four of the five children here are little brats, I don't blame Wonka for badmouthing them all the time and wanting to distance himself from them. He's pretty much got a superiority complex. Plus, if someone would just suddenly embrace me out of nowhere and stare at me like that, I'd want to back the f*** away too. Then why is the door so small? It's to keep all the great big chocolatey flavor inside. <laughs> Why does Wonka laugh after almost every sentence? Because he's a kid trapped in a man's body and he's excited to show everyone the wonders of his factory. <laughs> Welcome to the obvious green screen room, <laughs> Actually, 90% of the chocolate room was all real, so here's five scenes for disrespecting all the hard work put into the set. And why didn't this win the Oscar for Best Production Design again? But there's just no charm or whimsical magic as they're exploring this room. It's supposed to be this beautiful magical experience, which the Gene Wilder song covered perfectly, but here it's just a big nothing. But they did portray the magical whimsical aspect of this room at the beginning of this scene. 
This part of the scene is more about establishing certain aspects about these characters and how they react to each other. But look! An Oompa Loompa! It's not an Oompa Loompa! It's not even orange! It's one midget mirrored a million times! Well, if you read the original novel, you'll know that Oompa Loompas were supposed to be a race of short African natives. They're not supposed to be the orange aliens Mel Stewart portrayed them as. And do we seriously need to watch Wonka hunting the Oompa Loompas? Did Tim Burton not realize that what made the original one so great was the mystery? Who saw the original and thought, hey, I wonder where the you came from? But I do like how the original film kept the origins of these people a secret. I also like how Tim Burton showcased the original country visually. Film is a visual medium after all. And plus, if they didn't show Wonka meet the Oompa Loompas, how do we know Wonka was telling the truth? For all we know, he could have just scattered them all and forced them into slavery. So I told the Oompa Loompas, come live with me in peace and safety, away from all the wang doodles and rotten vernicious canids. Oh yeah, he'll lick a beetle's blood off of a knife, but he's not drinking any Oompa sauce. But does. Remember how Gene Wilder was fed up with Augustus and had no remorse after because he deserved it? He just didn't care. Well here, the tube starts to come over and Wonka sees it and looks sadistic. It looks like he wants this to happen. He's like a serial killer. Oh, he's gonna die. <laughs> My plan has worked. <laughs> Let's be honest here. Wonka pretty much planned this whole scheme. He's basically a psychopath. This is scarier than the original boat scene! And this is the one that they wanted kids to enjoy?! Well, if kids can handle Beetlejuice and Coraline, I'm sure they can handle seeing a fat boy getting sucked up a chocolate pipe. But you all just saw a child possibly get killed! In fact, they all get over it almost instantly! Even his mom is like, ooh, look, Oompa Loompas! I'm sure they were more bewildered and confused rather than relieved while seeing the Oompa Loompas basically mocking Augustus. Well, of course, we must admit. Oh, look, 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 they changed the pitch in their voice. That automatically makes it funny. Are you sure they hadn't their piss because it's funny and not solely because they're short people? Where is my son? Oh, now you suddenly want to know where he is. She's precisely asking, where has my son been taken to through that pipe? Hey, by the way, did you guys know that chocolate contains a property that triggers the release of endorphins. And did you know that you've completely destroyed a Gene Wilder performance? Hey, hey on this guy all you want, but admit it. He's still Oscar worthy compared to whatever that Tom and Jerry crossover was. And remember how iconic the boat scene was? Creepy and scary, but so memorable. Nah, destroyed. It's just kind of there. Maybe some people didn't appreciate these season inducing visuals or seeing the chicken's head getting cut off. Maybe they just wanted to see a fun boat ride. Oh, will you stop with the stupid Wonka backstory? We loved Wonka because he was mysterious. We didn't need all of this. Again, I do like the original film's mystery too, but I do appreciate how Tim Burton explains how Wonka became as demented and childlike as he is. Plus, these flashbacks foreshadow the emotional climax where Wonka innocently denies Charlie's family until he has to learn to appreciate his father. But his dad let him go trick-or-treating, but then took away his sweets anyway. Kind of a dick. It's to show his son the dangers of eating sweets, especially when it comes to his teeth. He is a dentist after all. Stop the boat! I want to show you guys something. It's my Razzie collection. <laughs> what Razzie collection? Wait, so he didn't even test this gum out before opening the factory? As a matter of fact, wait a minute. This isn't even Violet's fault. I mean, yeah, she didn't spit it out when Wonka told her to, but he gave her the gum! Firstly, he did test it out. He himself said he tried on 20 of his workers and still didn't work out the kinks. And second, he didn't give her the gum. Violet took it without his permission and was too stupid not to spit it out when Wonka told her to. The song is terrible. They're trying to modernize Willy Wonka and make it hip and cool, but it's just painful and cringy. But they weren't modernizing the Oompa Loompa songs to be hip and cool. All Danny Elfman did was take certain lyrics from the Wild Doll story and set them to the tune of different music styles. If they really wanted this to be hip and cool, most of these songs would be nothing more than our tune pop songs. I love how Grandpa Joe is just staring him down the entire time. Nice ass, Mr. Wonka. Now you know what it's like to watch this guy's infamous Lord of the Rings video. And Wonka really went to go and find some nasty ass melted destroyed chocolate. Little weirdo. And somehow it's still perfectly fine. Considering that the chocolate's at the very bottom of the fireplace and protected by the foil, yeah I'd say it's still fine. Also, considering we find out that Wonka's been obsessed with chocolate all his life, how are his teeth still perfectly white? Because he still kept his dad's dental advice to hard even through his biasness? 
Daddy, I want a squirrel. Get me one of those squirrels. I want one. And an emotion. Well, considering how she automatically gets what she wants, she practically sees her father as her own credit card and nothing else. And she literally walks through the railing and nobody stops her. Because if her dad did stop her, she would have thrown some sort of fit. And considering it's the last thing he wants. <laughs> what, he can't just go over the gate? Oh, it's locked up, but your daughter's in danger. She's about to die. Do something. How do you know the adults are basically able to just walk over the gate or go through the bars? They're much bigger compared to Faroka. But Jesus Christ, this is dark. Again, this is the one Roald Dahl's family said kids can enjoy? Well, Don Bloat has always followed the philosophy that children can handle anything as long as it has an happy ending. I should know because he directed these. I've just been informed that the incinerator's broken. Well... That's good news. That was probably the worst death of them all, and they're still so casual about it. Probably because they trust Wonka that he'll get the kids back safely. But how f***ing big is this factory? It's even got a damn mountain inside it. They did say the factory was 50 times bigger than any old factory, so... Wait, they have a hospital for puppets but not kids? Because the kids weren't injured enough to warrant serious medical attention? First off, there's a difference between waves and particles. No, there's not. Yes, there is. Don't you realize what you've invented? It's a teleporter! The most important invention in the history of the world! You know, Mike's actually got a point. Wonka just made the greatest discovery in human history, and he's wasting it on f***ing chocolate. Except what Mike doesn't realize is that there's a difference between teleporting someone from one place to another and just transporting Matt onto a television screen. It's television, not telephone. There's quite a difference. It's just me, Mr. Wonka. Oh, it is just me. Just little old me. Oh, a poor little boy to molest. Oh, well, molesters can't be choosy. <laughs> also, how is Mike already cured? He was injured just seconds before they smashed out the ceiling. Except he didn't get fully cured. The thing is, this just comes across as weird and creepy. In the original, Wonka wanted someone to continue his work, but Charlie lasting the entire tour wasn't enough. He had one final test to see if his loyalty was really there, and then he proved himself and his family were all welcome. Here, not only do they not have that final test, so Charlie could have theoretically done anything during this tour as long as he remained safe, and he still would have won. But it wasn't to see who didn't get into an accident. It was just to see who was the least run now, the bunch. But Wonka then wants Charlie to come and live with him alone. And the entire arc of Wonka hating families is pointless and adds nothing. His entire trauma with his father just makes for time filler and that is it. Emily, the book did kind of end anticlimactically as Charlie won the whole contest and that was that. And just like the gobstopper test in the original film, you can say that this is Charlie's final test to see if he would give up his family for all the chocolate in the world. Except Wonka was the one who lost the test at first because he thought Charlie would just go with him with no questions asked. Wonka looks so miserable that he couldn't get a little kid to come and live with him, and now he's left an even bigger hole in the ceiling. How are we supposed to feel sorry for him? Keep in mind that Wonka raised his own candy empire without the consent of his father, and thus developed a self-prophecy that in order to be successful, he has to make creative decisions without the consent of any guardians. You can't run a chocolate factory with a family hanging over you like an old dead goose. The chocolatier has to run free and solo. He has to follow his dreams. Gosh darn the consequences. I had no family and I'm a giant success. And seeing Charlie rejecting his offer meant that said philosophy crashed and burned before his eyes. If you really think about it, him being so torn up makes a plethora of sense. Grandpa Joe spent the whole day out of bed. He didn't feel tired at all. So? He did that during the entire tour of the factory and he was fine! Stop acting like it's a big deal! I mean, it's not like he spent years, if not decades, out of bed and somehow didn't immediately... ...keel over and die. Usually they're just trying to protect you because they love you. What kid acts and talks this way? A kid who has actual good parents and has slept in poverty long enough to appreciate what he has? Jeez, even Christopher Lee hasn't aged since Wonka was a kid. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that goatee didn't get whitened with the same magic that apparently uprooted his house. But here's a big problem. Not only does Charlie spot pictures of Wonka as a kid, clearly older than he was when he ran away, so that doesn't make any sense, but his dad has newspaper clippings of his son's success. He's famous, so how the f*** 
do you not know what Willy f***ing Wonka looks like? Because Willy's never been in public for the better half of a decade, and also because the lack of sunlight gave him longer hair and paler skin than the CGI job that Pirates 5 gave him? This is a complete disgrace to the entire human race! Bumbler! Seriously, I cannot understand a single word you're saying.